What's up all you lovely learners out there in learning land? Merry Christmas from Tyler at 10 Thumbs Pro. Today we're learning Frosty the Snowman in the chord melody style with new ukulele tutorials every single Wednesday and Saturday. Make sure you hit subscribe and ring that bell if you like this kind of content. Also go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Those likes really do help the channel. Printable tabs for this tutorial by becoming a Patreon. That also includes tabs for all of our previous and future tutorials as well. You'll see a link here in the notes as well as the description. Links to the specific tab for this lesson pinned in the first comment in the comment section, as well as timestamps, so you can jump to the part in the tutorial that you are learning. We try to make it both easy and fun for all you learners. In the end credits and the description as well, you will see a link to the Christmas tutorial playlist. Check out the playlist if you like Christmas music. All right, time to get frosty. Go ahead and grab your ukulele, brain and attention span, and once you have those three things, follow me on in and let's play some Frosty the Snowman. Come on in, let's do it. Okay, so we're actually just gonna jump right into it. Let's bring the first four measures up. If you feel like you want some extra help with the chord shapes, here they are at this time. Feel free to skip to the end of the video and learn the chord shapes. But because all the tabs are on the screen, you don't necessarily need those chord shapes verbatim. So we're just gonna jump in. Again, feel free if you want the extra help. Let's go ahead and rock out these first four measures. They sound like this. One, two, three, four. Okay, so we're gonna start off with this C5, and I'm fretting the third fret of the E string and the A string with two different fingers, ring finger on the E string, pinky on the A, and I am strumming the first three strings with my thumb. On the second beat, no melody, I use my index finger to strum through. So I go one, two. And that second strum is a little bit lighter because I don't want any melody to come forward. I want to try to just keep the rhythm going. One, two, three. I then remove my fingers and I pinch the C string and the E string with my thumb and my index finger. And I go back to the C5, strum through on the fourth beat, then my loose index finger will grab the first fret of the E string. So I get really slowly. One, two, three, four, and one. First beat, I go back to the C5 shape, strum through with my thumb, then I keep my thumb there because I'm gonna play the third fret of the A string on the second beat. Then I'll strum through on the third beat, index finger, no melody again, so it's a little softer, not trying to bring any notes forward. That's why I'm also using my index finger is because the thumb has a tendency to pull the melody forward the index finger has a tendency to kind of push the notes together, for lack of a better word, a little more. Then on the fourth beat, I get my middle finger on the second fret of the A string. I strum through with my thumb, and then my middle oops, then my middle finger will come and grab the third fret of the A string. You could hammer on there if you wanted to. It sounds nice. And then I come up, I keep this ring finger down, and I move to the fifth fret while my middle finger will play the fifth fret of the C string, and I'll pinch thumb on the C, index on the A. My wrist will then roll over, and my middle finger will slide to the fourth fret, and my index finger is gonna grab the third fret of the A string, and then I slide down and make a G7, removing my middle finger here, playing the open A, and then back to my C5. So that third measure, which is the trickiest so far, would be. Very cool, right? And then we strum second beat, no melody. Third beat, no melody. And fourth beat, we do that C major trick that we've already seen. Second fret, strum all the way through, and play the third fret with your ring finger. So these four measures, really, really slow. Let's count them out. We get. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and. All right, let's play them without counting. One, two, three, four. four measures. We start off 
with something that's very familiar. Doot, doot, doot. But we're going to play the open A two times. So it's the same as the third measure previously. Two times on the open E string. Make a C5. Play the third fret. And this is new. We make an A7 chord. So we put our index finger on the first fret of the C string. We're going to strum the first three strings with our thumb. Dense, jazzy, like it. And we want that E string to ring out. Then from there we go G note, A note. So it's thumb on the G string, index on the open A. So just that second measure. One, two, three, four, and. Really, really pretty, right? And then we make the D minor. Well, what we're going to do is get our middle finger on the second fret of the C string. Then our ring finger is going to play the third fret. We're going to pinch those together. Then we remove our ring finger, index finger on the first fret of the E string, and we pinch those together. Then thumb and index finger, open G, open E. Make a G7, thumb strum the first three strings. Then make a C chord and strum the first three, which would be open, open, open with your thumb. Second beat, index. Third and fourth, G7, index finger, no melody. So just the second half of this from that D minor. The four of these nice and slow, counting out. We get one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Let's play it one time without counting. One, two, three, four. Very, very cool. And that is our verse. Okay, first four measures here in the second verse are exactly the same. And you see that on the fourth beat of the first measure, we went back to the C5. So then we bring up the next four measures and the last measure is a little different. So the first two measures here are exactly the same. Then we get here and it gets just a little different. The, the D minor is the same. The G with the open G and the open E string are the same. But here on the first one you made a G7 and here we're going to emphasize that D note. So what we're going to do is we're going to play the G7. So we're going to play the open two strings, and then we're going to just play just that D note. So the third measure you get, and you're going to play the open C on the first beat of the next one, and then the C7, and then the open C. So just the second half of this you get. So just these four measures we get. Very cool. All right, and then we're into the bridge. So let's take a look at the bridge. First four measures of the bridge sound like this. Melody sounds a lot like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. I don't know what the story about the relationship on that is, but I also hear Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. So we play through our F, thumb strum all four, three, or all four. Then we play the open A string. Then we get our pinky on the third fret of the A string and we strum all the way through. And then again, we play the pinky, just the pinky alone on the fourth fret. So we get. O, 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 2, C major 7, open A, 
Then we're going to do an A7 again, but get your ring finger on the third fret of the E string. Followed by an open E, D minor, thumb strum just the first three strings, then keep it down there, open A, G major, thumb strum the first three strings, then you'll grab the F note on the first fret of the E string, and then you'll pinch these two fingers on the C, the open C, open E, and you'll strum the C two times with your index, no melody, and then you'll pinch them again. So that went pretty quick, but that's because those are all quarter notes, and with the exception of the last measure, there is singing on each of those. So this is really, really straightforward. Maybe the easiest four measures in the song. Nice and slow. If we play through these nice and slow, we get... Okay, so the second half here, let me play through these four for you. They sound like this. Okay, we start off D note two times. One, two, we're playing. I'm already fretting a G chord and I'll thumb strum for the first three. And then I'll play the open G here. If you have a low G, you should play this G here. Then I'm gonna strum through with my thumb on the first beat all the way through. The melody is a B note. Then I'll play that B note again. Then I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna fret the seventh fret with my index finger. I'm sorry, the fifth fret with my index finger and the seventh fret with my ring finger. Now, this seventh fret is the same as this G. So you could either one exactly the same. If you didn't, if this was difficult for you, you could. Now that's assuming you have a high G. If you have a low G, you have to do the five and seven. Then on the fourth beat, the melody goes. And because we're way down here with our index finger, what we're gonna do is we're gonna play the fifth fret and slide to the second fret. Four and, four and, one. Now this would be the most advanced chord for you beginners out there. We're doing this A minor, which is O, four, five, three. So make just this A minor seven. Now this comes from, well, let's go ahead and actually play those first two measures first and let's break this chord down. So the first two measures, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one. Okay, G minor. Hopefully you know the G minor. If you move the G minor up two frets, it becomes an A minor seven because we have the open G note. And if you put a G note in an A minor chord, it makes it an A minor seven because the G note is the seven. It is one whole step below the root, making it a flat seven interval. When you add a flat seven interval to a minor chord, you get a minor seven. So A minor seven. But we're also gonna play an A7 suspended four. So to turn this chord into an A7 suspended four, your pinky plays the fifth fret of the A string. So you strum through those four, and then the A minor seven. The easiest way to do that is to make this shape here, the suspended, and have this finger ready so when you remove the pinky, you go right to the A minor. It's A minor seven. Come down, two, two, second fret of the C string, second fret of the A string, which comes from a D6. And then you're gonna pull off that second fret to the open A. From there, you make a G, thumb strum the first three, Emphasize this G, that's where your melody is. Then the melody is an F note, so you make a G7. Well, you go one, two, then you'll make the G7, strum through with your thumb, three, no melody on the fourth beat, index finger. So just the second half of that, you would get one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. These four measures together, nice and slow, you get one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, let's put, let's play the whole bridge together. Then we're 
we're into the next verse. So if we put up the first three measures of, if we put up the first four measures of verse number three, business as usual. Next four, business as usual. A little bit of movement here. So the very end, the last two measures of this, the D minor movement's familiar. Then open G, open E, familiar. Second fret, familiar. Open C, familiar. We'll play the C. And then we're gonna play two G7 with no melody, which is gonna take us to the coda or the outro. So, okay, so these four measures. One thing I like to do sometimes is pull off right there. If you look at the second half, the. To give that a little bit of movement when I go to that final, final C. Boom, boom, boom. You can also, over that G7, do the triplet strum, which I would do on the third beat, and then give it some vibrato, and then boom. So then we're into the coda. Let's take a look at the coda. And then we got the whole song. Okay, so if we look at the coda, we'll see with the exception of the first beat of the third measure, everything's happening on the C and the E strings. So I'm going to use my ring finger on the third fret of the E, and I'm going to pinch those two. That familiar movement by now. Then I'm going to play the third fret here on the and, and then the two. One and two. Three, four. So I'll pinch on the third beat, and then just the three of the E string on the fourth beat. One and two, three, four. Five, three, so we get one and two, three, four. Exact same here, except for we're gonna play the fifth fret of the E string on the first beat. That's an A note. An A note relative to the C is a sixth interval. So we're implying a C6 here. One and two, three, four then we play the open c open a which is the exact same thing as this actually so you can do either one open g string c and e open g string second fret with your index finger on the c string because we're going right into a g three down strums no melody there so the first case okay, so of the first half of the coda we get Okay, and then the fourth, we bring it up, we get, we're going to the G now. So we're fretting the second fret with our index finger. Same rhythm, one and two, three, four, pinching on the one and the three. One and two, three, four, one, or one, or one. I like to come over and Actually, I like to use my pinky saying that. So I like to go one and two, three, four. So I'll get my pinky on the fifth fret of the... Right here on the fifth fret of the E string. But you could also play the open A. Now, if you're thinking, well, the open A is so much easier. Why would I use my pinky? Because the open A is going to keep out ringing. If we use our pinky, we cut it off when we go to the third fret. One and two, three, four. And then we strum the first three strings this time. One and two. Then we're going to make a G9, which is a G7, but remove your index finger. So it's a G7 with an A note. The A note relative to the G is the ninth interval or the second interval. But it's not a G add nine because we have the F note here making it a dominant. So we have a G9. And our ring finger comes down and plays the second fret of the A. We strum all the way through for our G7, then C, and we have finished the song. So the second half of the coda would be. Wait a minute.
random solo. All right, feel free to throw in a random solo, C major at the end of the tune. Okay, let's go ahead and play the whole thing. Great job. So let's go ahead and learn the chords. I know it sounds kind of funny. Hope you did an awesome job with the play along. Now, if you want to, you can review the chord shapes to have them in the bag or so you can use these for your own compositions or just to kind of understand a little better how I compose this. Like I said, if you made it this far, you clearly didn't need the chord shapes to learn the lesson. But let's just go ahead and take a look at them. These are in the order of appearance in the tutorial. The first one is a C5. I play the C5 with two fingers. You could bar, but it is the fifth fret of the E string and the fifth fret of the A string. Now this is really common when I have a G note in my C chord and I want to get a little more harmony behind that. I use that chord for that purpose. C, move that over to the second fret with your middle finger. C major 7. The B note is the seventh interval to the C, making it a C major 7. F. So this F is actually two notes. It is the F note and the D note, technically making this an F6. When I'm composing these and I have a D note over my F chord, instead of reaching way over there, I like to do this double stop because it has the root, the F note, and just the D note really really cool and great if you're composing your own chord melodies okay we have an F with your pinky on the third fret you'll see a lot of times the C note is the melody over the F chord so you use this one quite a bit we have the G7 in the key of C you are just gonna see a G7 eventually a7 open one open open D minor, classic D minor, nothing fancy. Two, two, one, O. Oh. G six, O oh, two, O oh, two, and this is going to be common when you have a G harmony with an E in the melody. So that's what this shape is trying to accomplish: getting that E in the melody over your G chord. All right, then we have um, popping up here. We have a regular G. And we have a C7. So this is a good teaching moment. What's the difference between a C major 7 and a C7? A C7 has a B flat. A B flat relative to your C is your flat 7th interval. So a 7 chord adds the flat 7th interval, which is two notes below the root. The major 7 adds the 7th interval, which is just one note below the root. So you have your C note. 7th interval is a B, flat 7th interval is a B flat. Flat 7th interval makes a C7, 7th interval makes a C major 7. 
Normally, the C7, you won't see this in the key of C because the key of C does not have a B flat note, but it's a common songwriter's trick if you're going from a C to a C7. The F chord is in the key of C, and sometimes songwriters will go C, C7 on their way to F. Even though F is the fourth chord in the key of C, C7 is the fifth of the key of F. So that's a common songwriting trick when you're moving from the one to the four chord to pass through the dominant seven. We have another A7 with the G chord in here. So you get your first fret on the C string and your ring finger on the third fret of the E. So this is just doubling down on the G notes. A7 suspended four. We touched on this actually in the tutorial. O two five or O four five five. Move that, remove that pinky, get it down on the third fret, A minor seven. G minor shape, moved up two frets. We still have the G note in there to make it a minor seven. If you moved it up one fret, you would have what's called the A flat minor major seven. And I know that sounds funny, but it's still a minor chord. The major seven doesn't make a major or a minor chord, but it actually refers to the seventh interval. All right, D6, bar the entire second fret. It's also known as a B minor seven. With the ukulele, we have so many inversions that you'll see sometimes certain chords are called the same name as other chords. C6, this is an interesting C6. The A note is the sixth interval relative to the C. So if you strum all your ukulele open and in tune, this is also a C6 but you kind of get this. Oops, it'd be like this. Shuffle thing going when you play the C note and your ring finger plays the fifth fret of the E string. You could go three, five, six, five to get a blue shuffle. Fret that second fret and then, well, fret the third fret and play the fifth fret. I'm sorry, second fret here and the fifth fret here. And this is coming from a G with an A in it. So that's a G add nine. Now the difference between a G add nine and a G nine, which is our next chord, O two, one, O, is the G add nine adds an A note to a G major. The G nine adds an A note to a G seven. So the G seven refers to these type of chords called dominants. And a G nine is a dominant chord, and a G add nine is not a dominant chord. And there you have it. That is the chords and the chord theory behind it. That's why I waited to the end. So you kind of theory geeks out there like me could have a lot of fun with this and really learn about the chords. It would just take too long to do that at the beginning of the tutorial. All right, everybody. Have a lovely day. Keep it frosty. Frosty the snowman, baby. Yeah. Frosty the snowman from the North Pole. That's right, baby. All he's got to do is stay cold because then he'll melt. Test, turn, start to wilt, and then he's gone like the KFC commercial where they had the hot bucket of the chicken and the colonel is a snowman. Thank you so much for watching to the very end of the tutorial here at 10 thumbspro.com. We appreciate you and we appreciate you trusting your learning with us. Thing about becoming a Patreon is cheaper than a cheap cheeseburger and it will accelerate your learning. It starts at just a dollar creation, so a dollar a lesson, but you can also set a cap at a dollar a month. So you can support two, three, four lessons. We encourage you to think about how many lessons you do in the month, but no matter how many lessons you support, you have access to all the PDFs. You can also give a little more to get some extra rewards, and we do some live Zoom lessons, some other cool stuff. 
Okay, until next time, keep on rocking and rolling. Keep on playing that ukulele. Keep on loving life. It's all good, my friends. Love, peace, and chicken grease. We appreciate you here at 10 Thumbs uh, Pro. Let's see if we can say that in pig Latin. Iwe appreciate uye ate in thumbse opre. It sounds like Cleon. Cleon. Klingon. Sorry for my Star Trek people. Okay, until next time, have a lovely day.